scanning for audio. Welcome once again to a Tin Dog Podcast. Ah yes, this time we're talking about one of my own personal favourites. We're talking about the second of the new series of Unit, Unit Shutdown. Now just like the last Unit story, we've got basically a never seen ITC series. Yes, we all would have liked a Unit TV series back in the 70s, but we never really got that, or even the 80s. But what we did get, well was the idea. Yes, there'll never be a Nicholas Courtney appearance in this particular version of Unit, but that's not our fault. In fact, it's nobody's fault. See, what we've got now is New Unit. New Unit, with its two, although you never see the other one, Osgood, and Kate, and her wide variety of people who you see here, but you never see on TV. Over to Mr Chibnall to fix that. Now, last time, we had them take on the Autons. The Autons are the villain for restarting things, for introducing things. We know where you stand with Autons. They like plastic. We've got some plastic. They want our planet. We've got a planet. They, we've got interesting and exciting new ways of grabbing it from us. Unit isn't the Doctor. Unit can do things their own way. They are an international organisation, regardless of how you think that their word is spelt. As I record this review... The vote has not come in yet for Brexit. So, perhaps they're a unified intelligence task force, or perhaps just united. We just don't know. Just like the UK. I'm sure by the time you hear this review, you'll know exactly where you stand, and all of the worries you had will have gone and gone, and the sun will still have risen. But as I sit here doing this review, the polls are about to close, and I can't help but be worried for the future. I am, of course, a natural worry. And what do I do to escape from these worries? I listen to Big Finish, of course. So, like I said, what's it all about? The synopsis is simple. Kate Stewart and her unit team investigate and confront alien attacks on the planet Earth in this new five-disc boxed set. What you've actually got is four individual episodes of one big story arc. Now, of course, with it being unit on audio, you get to travel around the world and have exciting and marvellous locations because it's a lot easier to do it on audio than it is to actually film it or cheat something using blue screen, slash green screen, slash you know what I mean, models or whatever. You've got four stories written by Matt Fitton and Andrew Smith. Everyone knows what a fan of Andrew Smith's writing I am, so I won't bang on about that. Well, I'll bang on a little bit. But also, Matt Fitton, together, make a great team for this. Now, there are aspects of this story which you could class as spoilers. And you know me, I don't like giving out spoilers. I'd much rather you enjoyed the story. So, I'll start off by saying, great box set. If you like Unit, you're not going to be disappointed. If you like Osgood, you're not going to be disappointed. Yes, the word Pharos does get mispronounced, and I'm surprised nobody picked up on that. But you know what? In a battle situation, I'm sure we all mispronounce words. That's not going to be a problem, and I'm sure not everyone would spot that. (laughs) Yeah, right. Like I said, four stories, all interlinked, all fitting together very well. You will want to do this entire box set in one setting. Don't pace yourself. Do it over a week. Do one per day. Perhaps half an hour per day. I would say one episode per day over a week works particularly well. Episode 1, Power Cell. Osgood and Captain Josh Carter are sent to investigate the disappearance of a unit scientist. Meanwhile, alien technology has fallen into the hands of Lime Industries and Kate Stewart can't persuade the company's CEO, Felicity Lime, to give it back. But unit find themselves fighting a third battle when innocent people start to die. Who are the mysterious assassins, and what does Felicity Lime want with top-secret alien technology? Well, you can guess what she wants with top-secret technology. But it's good to see that Unit is quite definitely based in our world. Well, a variant on it, you know what I mean. And Matt Fitton does a lovely job of setting up all of the stories. 
Some people say that the episode one is always the easiest because that's the one where you're creating the mystery and you're adding things. That is to sell this short. This isn't episode one as such. It is an entire episode in itself, a whole story. Yes, there is one big arc over the whole thing, one big mystery that builds and builds, but there are enough threads to allow you to have an individual and quite satisfying individual tale. Episode two, Death in Geneva. Yes, we've now got more expanse, more world-encompassing things. Yes, you get to go to Geneva. Yes, you get to not visit CERN. And yes, that's mainly because there was a Torchwood story set there, but that's not important. What is important is that you've got more of an international feel, and we get to see this Geneva that people at UNIT have been banging on about since the 60s slash 70s slash 80s. With a few people left to trust, and with assassins on their tail, Kate and Osgood raised to unit command centre Geneva. Will General Avery be able to help them? But when death follows unit all the way from the English countryside to the snowy slopes of the Alps, Captain Carter finds himself in a race against time. As the body count rises, Kate struggles to separate friend from foe. Danger circles Osgood even closer, and high in the mountains, Josh comes face to face with the enemy. Yes, it's constantly building, and yes, it's getting steadily more and more exciting, and this works. Yes, there are throwaway geographical references, which just kind of fit. They don't seem arbitrary, and they don't seem forced, which would be very easily done. A nicely structured, nicely controlled piece, and it does build. This is where we're getting to see more and more of the alien menace, and we start hearing their names. Now, unfortunately... Because I wasn't truly concentrating at the time, I did mishear their original names as Tamagotchi, which are the small electronic pets. Now, I know they're portrayed as massive ninja alien killers with energy fixations, but I did keep thinking that at their core was a tiny little electronic pet that you could feed or starve to death simply by leaving them switched on in the kitchen side. Not bitter. I looked after that thing for days. So, the Tamagotchi aliens might or might not have visited a feudal China slash Japan, um, that area of the world, and influenced their culture in the same way that aliens may have influenced the Egyptians, that kind of thing. That's a lovely little bit of conceit that gives a lovely background to the story. But of course, you start thinking when you're listening, is these the, are these the aliens that are mentioned in the Torchwood story? Their name also is very familiar to that ongoing story arc. Is this going to be the Torchwood unit crossover that we feared slash longed for we just don't know and i'm not going to tell you right now because i want you to buy this box because it's marvelous moving on to story three another one by andrew smith now i need to tell you a very boring and convoluted story this story is actually called the battle for the tower and it is indeed a battle for the tower of london now the tower of london holds the one of the world's oldest museums museum of arms and armory And at some point many, many years ago, this museum's collection just became too damn big. And this museum expanded and became the Royal Armouries in Leeds, which, if you've been paying any attention, was where I worked until we had our daughter. I was the image librarian, but that's not important. So basically, by extension, I once worked for the museum that is on top of the Black Archive in the Black Tower. That makes me basically a unit operative, so watch yourself. Perhaps not. This is an ongoing battle for the Tower. The Tower of London is a brilliant place, and I definitely recommend you go if you live there, and if you don't, put it on your list of places to visit and pop into. Yes, as a tourist attraction, it's great, but it also has immense actual real history. The people who work there are terribly enthusiastic, and their love of the place and history just shines through. And you know what? You can tell that Andrew Smith went on a tour. He did his research because it's all there. The geography of the place, the references, the building, similar to his research that he did for the survivors references in the post office tower, the telecom tower. It all shines through and it makes the story, the realisation incredibly real. Oh, I do need to mention Osgood's call sign. When she gets a text message on her phone, it makes a very, very familiar sound. Not just the TARDIS dematerialising, but when she gets a text message, it does sound a bit cloister belly. Now, the problem with the cloister belly is when did she get a chance to record that? 
Because when it's going off, you don't go, oh, I need that sound effect. But that's another story for another time. The Battle for the Tower is a brilliant story. And of course, it is basically, well, here's the synopsis. The threat is now clear and Kate Stewart retreats to Unit HQ with her most trusted colleagues. She has no choice but to place the Black Archive on lockdown. And the Tower of London is where Unit will make its stand. While the capital sleeps, an alien horde is gathering, ready to rise from the shadows to attack Earth's greatest defence force inside its own stronghold. The tower is infiltrated and Unit must hold the line at any cost. Lock and load. Finally bringing us to the end of the story in Ice Station Alpha. Yes, I know the name of the story comes from Ice Station Zebra. One of those films they would always wheel out at school and put on the VHS player for us all to watch at Christmas. But that just reveals how utterly ancient I truly am. Ice Station Alpha is basically just a reference to the fact that it is set, well, somewhere very cold. Again, I don't want to give up too many spoilers, so here's the synopsis. Caught between human greed and unstoppable power, Kate Stewart leads her closest allies on one final desperate mission. This could be the very last chance for the human race. But the unit team has been declared rogue, and ruthless military forces are in pursuit as they race across the globe. Kate calls Lieutenant Sam Bishop to their aid, while Josh and Osgood head out across the frozen Antarctic plains to try and prevent a disaster no one else knows is coming. It's a brilliant conclusion to a great box set. I did not think there could be a lot of action and violence and the sort of thing that requires a camera to pull out and show you exactly what's going on. Because audio is a very intimate piece of drama, of storytelling. And to have large pitch battles that don't just sound like a collection of sound effects is an art in itself, and this is achieved here. A great box set, a great edition. Pre-order CD price £20, digital pre-order price £20. You just can't go wrong. So with that... I'll play you the... So with that, I'll let you hear the trailer and decide for yourself. So until next time, when I'll speak to you probably about Doctor Who, be seeing you. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Unit Shutdown. Hello? You still there? What was it that attacked you, did you see? Not properly. But I'm pretty sure those things weren't human. They were strong. And they moved so quickly. Why are you here? There is something on this planet that does not belong to you. It is Kamishi, and we have come to reclaim it. I'm sorry, Miss Lyon, but this work is extremely sensitive and highly confidential. On whose authority are you here? Oh, the very highest. Her Majesty's government itself. Osgood! Josh! (laughs) Josh! Stand back! I'm going to lower a line! What is happening here? We are hunting the human warriors. Swordfish 3. Never thought I'd get to use one of these mini subs. Let's open her up, see what she can do. All right, everyone, they're coming on this side. There! Josh, are you sure you can fly this thing? Really, Oscar? It's like you've forgotten who you're here with. Big finish. We love stories. Osgood. On the 3rd of September 2016, Hooverville 8 will be with us. Possibly the friendliest convention in the whole of the UK. This year's guests include, but are not limited to, Kai Owen from Torchwood, Michael Jason from Doctor Who, The Valiard himself, Katie Manning, Joe Grant, Eric Sayward, Sophie Aldred, Good Old Ace, and Matthew Dale. For more information and to book your ticket, visit the Derby Quad website, www.derbyquad.co.uk. D-E-R-B-Y-Q-U-A-D.co.uk. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. 
Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 